Hello and welcome back. And do you guys remember a couple of weeks ago, me and Eddie here at NAS Compares, we made a video about why you do not need a NAS. And I'll be honest, it caused something of a cuffle. Let's get it out of the way straight away. I love NAS. I would love it if everyone had their own network attached storage device, their own private server with all of their data on board. But I've got to accept it's not for everyone. Also, we've got to accept that a network attached storage device isn't the only option. Sometimes it's actually good to use both cloud and use a NAS or a NAS, a DAS and the cloud. But that's not what today's video is about. Today, let's get right down to brass knuckle tax here. We are going to discuss why you need a NAS. And if you are watching this and you don't already have one, maybe you should get one. And these are the five main reasons. Total data ownership. Seriously, if you care about where your data is and the ownership of your data, getting your own network attached storage device is just a no brainer. Now, a big part of this video is obviously gonna be me dumping on cloud service, but there's no avoiding that when data is in the cloud, your actual ownership of the data is negligible. There's no avoiding that. You are moving your data onto someone else's server. That's all cloud is. It's just another server, a bigger server. It's a huge city-sized server, but that's what it is. Now, true data ownership when you've got your own server means that in some cases, quite literally, the data is in house. With that, you have got control over where the copies of that data is. You can control who can access the data. You can control the flow of that data. You have full control and ownership of the data. Your data is in your chuffing hands. Now, when it's in the cloud, you do have a lot of those things. It's in a cloud space that's in your username. It's in your account name. You choose who can access to it to a point. But it doesn't mean part of maintenance, part of general access, or in some slightly dubious cases, when AI models are involved, that that data isn't being accessed without you knowing. Having your own NAS means data ownership. As much as having a USB stick in your pocket, this means the data is in your hands. Bespoke security. Once again, I'm not suggesting that data on the cloud is inherently insecure. That is not the point I am making. I am saying that when your data is in a NAS solution, it means you control the security. Not just the general access, we talked about that. But let's take, for example, you have got your NAS there in the middle and you want to grant five or six users access to that data. Now you can control the level of access of each of those users. You can control the protocol that they can access with. You can access and control the authentication and also rescind that authentication at a moment's notice if you choose to. You can control the level of their password security. You can control two-factor authentication requirements there. You can access even and control the devices and the client hardware they use to access at the very IPs that they can access. Access. Now, a number of these protocols and security course precautions are available on cloud. But the important point is, because cloud has to be more general, because it's got so many smaller accessing users, the level of control and bespoke controls is significantly less than that on your own network attached appliance. And that isn't even when we get into the rest of your network. When you have the NAS running into a switch, which in of itself can have its own security protocol control. When it goes into the router, when you can control the security protocols and access, hell, you can create air gaps. That is, as the name suggests, gaps between your data and access that there is no means of access when you need to. Scheduled on and off, creating bubbles where your data lives, where at times of day, where for example, when you go to sleep, this system is completely 100% inaccessible. You can go basic with Wake on LAN, or a number of them now have scheduled on and off, thanks to the promotion of air gapping, which will mean that data has a very bespoke and very narrow, if you choose to, access pattern. And we haven't even discussed tailored alerts, where if there is someone accessing your system, whether they are trusted or otherwise, you can set up one of hundreds of tailored alerts that tell you when certain behavior patterns happen on your server system. It changes from brand to brand, but they've all got very bespoke tailored alerts that you can set out to a system admin or to the rest of the users when something is happening that shouldn't. True deletion. What do I mean by true deletion? When that data was on the cloud, you clicked delete, didn't you? It must be gone. Come on, be real. You know that if you click delete on data when it's in the cloud, you only have a pretty certain sense that it has been deleted there. Now they've got 
the whole 30 day trash can thing again that's pretty common you've seen that with windows but realistically when you have got that many servers on the cloud that many data centers that are many of them just backing up data from other servers true deletion is hard to guarantee and that also comes down to the very drives they utilize and again whether when you click delete, whether the remnants, the metadata, perhaps LLMs that have been built utilizing your data, depending on the TNC of the cloud you use, are genuinely gone. Now compare that to your own NAS system. Now, one could argue, if I click delete or format on this, is the data truly gone? Well, maybe it isn't. But at least when it's local, you can choose to use erasure tools that will sector block by block bit by bit, utterly erase the data on that system. On top of that, notwithstanding we mentioned about data in the cloud, is it truly gone on theirs? If you really want to, you can smash the f You can go ahead and incinerate this, absolutely destroy the device. If you want, take the drives that are inside and absolutely muller them if you choose to. There are companies out there, by the way, who will go out of their way to absolutely destroy drives for you. Now, there's going to be the odd pedant in the comments getting ready to type and say, oh, well, some of that data is still on the sectors. I'll say right now, the person that tries to put the data back from that drive all back together, good luck to you, because I could chuck this in the river. I could chuck this in a bonfire. Ultimately, it is the closest you're ever going to get to true deletion by owning your own data and your own server. It just costs less in the long term. To put this into the most basic, chewable, and frankly condescending terms, look at renting a property versus buying a property. Which one is the better long-term option? I know I review these devices, but realistically, we know they ain't cheap. Some of them do cost real money, and cloud services, they're pretty budget. Some of them are only a couple of nicker a month. But realistically, the long-term cost of you and your data is always, always, always going to end up being cheaper on a NAS. When you look at the numbers running down over the years, a NAS is always cheaper. Yes, it costs more at the beginning. I'm not going to say it isn't. But number one, you don't always have to pay the same amount. Great example, this thing. This is the Synology B station. It's basic AF, but I'll say right now, for 4 TB of storage and a NAS that can be accessed with cloud and remote and, sorry, cloud remote and local access, the few applications for photos and files, this is $199. That's four terabytes of storage, and that's the drive included, for uh, just shy of $200 there. You look at cloud services, that already is a better price than some cloud providers out there. I'm looking at you, Apple. Now, that's obviously a very unique example, and there are a lot more expensive solutions in the market there, but even when you look at having your data for more than two to three years, in most cases, it will end up being cheaper than a NAS, depending on your level of access and the importance of that data. If you keep paying year on year on a cloud service, two things happen. Number one, as that time wears on, you become more dependent on it because your data is on that cloud. And as the years go on, the mix and match of what's old and what's new is going to become baffling to you. And also, the tools allotted to you to go through old data and get rid of the dead wood are nowhere near as comprehensive or responsive or low latency as local tools will allow you to do. Ultimately, it means filtering through storage on the cloud is an incredibly annoying proposition. When you, when you want to get rid of it and save some space, you end up paying more and more money for the extra time. And we've not even talked about egress. To pull your data from the cloud, the majority of cloud providers limit how much data you can download from your cloud space every single day or every week or every month. If you want to try and get more of your data than that allotted quantity in that egress, and again, go for your terms and conditions, cloud users, you end up having to pay a charge. Now, these numbers are large, we're talking terabytes, but nevertheless, because they have to dedicate a lot of the flow to these larger amounts of data, they say, the egress is another way you're going to pay more money down the road. And realistically, if your data is in the cloud for five to 10 years, what's gonna happen afterwards? you're gonna to have to remove that data from the cloud. Where were you gonna put it? Why wait five to 10 years to buy a NAS server when you're gonna to need to buy one eventually to put the data onto it? Buy a NAS now. Performance, baby. 
Now with performance, before we dig into the weeds, let's be realistic. If I try to access any of these network attached storage devices via a remote internet protocol, that is to say that any of these NASes are 300 miles away somewhere else in the UK and I'm using the internet to access them remotely, the performance I'm gonna get isn't gonna be that much different than the cloud, Most uh, depending on the cloud service provider, of course, and their data center locations. But if I try to access one of these NAS solutions remotely, I'm of course gonna be impacted by three things. One, my upload download speed from my internet service provider, then the internet service provider speed of where the, uh, the system is based. And finally, that bit in the middle, whether I'm using a relay service from Synology, QNAP, TerraMaster, whatever, or I'm using a third party encrypted tunnel, like something like Tau scale or a zero tier or something like that to encrypt things through the door. All of these are all going to add up to relay points, adding a delay there for encryption purposes or just checking and data transmission. However, where NASes really excel and stretch their muscles in performance is local and not just the performance itself, but the options and tinkering that you, the end user, in very user-friendly ways can really scale things up. What do I mean? Well, from your router to a basic budget 15 nicker switch off Amazon, you can get minimum gigabit internet speeds in your network like that. That means 109 megabytes per second is easily achieved point to point on your local area network. And try getting 109 megabytes per second, megabytes, remember, not megabits, megabytes per second from a cloud service provider. You are gonna need bonkers internet speeds to get that. And you're gonna need the cloud provider to give you pretty unfettered access. So you're talking about a very expensive cloud platform and a very expensive internet platform there. But it doesn't end there. That was if you're using gigabit. What if you go ahead and get a 2.5 gigabit network switch or router? Take advantage of five gig, 10 gigabit there in the middle. You open up the tunnel substantially. And even in the case of this device, this budget one hard drive system, this is still gonna give you 150 to 200 megabytes per second. That is a fifth of a gigabyte per second there if you scale up the connections. Yes, it's limited to one gig, so it's a poor example, but the point I'm making is the drive media inside here can saturate that larger connection speed and therefore your local internet speed isn't just gonna be two, three, four, five, ten 10 times faster, it could be a hundred times faster like that. And I haven't even talked about utilizing SSDs in the system. I've not talked about when you set these devices up for multiple users accessing it. So for example, you could get a NAS device and then get four users to access it over 10 GBE. Each one of those has a quarter of, if they're all accessing together, the potential quarter of um, a gigabyte per second access, 250 megabytes per second. Whereas if you've got a cloud provider and four users in the same office using the same internet connection are all accessing the cloud, they are all sharing that one internet service connection. That means the speed they're all gonna get if they're all downloading at once is gonna be complete DS. It is not gonna be good. The performance of a NAS can speak for itself. But there you go, those are the five main reasons for me why you need a NAS. There is more to it than just these five, but these are the five that you really need to take with you, pop in your pocket and think about it before you spend the next bit of budget. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you wanna learn more, there are links in the description to other articles we've discussed, along with some recommended NASes as well, so you can check those out. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. If you do use those links below, it does result in a small commission to me and Eddie here at NAS Compares. It's just us doing what we do. There's the free advice section below as well as Ko-Fi and Patreon as well, where we can do expedited support. And of course, you can hire us as well. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.